Okay, here we are. Welcome back. My name is Kalani Nicole, and I'm here with Zyba Jabbar of Her Visions. Zyba's in London spending the evening with us tonight. So we were just talking about our break. We just took a little break. I was hanging out in the lounges, and um, I came across a friend in there, Andrew Blanton, um, who runs a program over at SJSU with a couple other uh, faculty members. The cadre is what they call it, the Center for Art, Design, Research, and Education. And actually, Don Hansen, who built New Art City, our exhibition platform, is part of that program over there right now. So we were just talking about like exhibition design and co-presence and stuff. But then one of the attendees jumped in, and we um, it, his name's Nico, and he was commenting during phases talk about the name of his computer, Big Boy. So then I was like, asking what kind of graphics cards he has on board and so like, <laughs> the 80s. And then it became this nerdy conversation where Andrew was kind of telling him about uh, how you can crossfire your graphics cards to get better performances. Like a whole range of just like wow. connecting to people to like getting really nerdy to, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's, it's pretty beautiful in there, I have to say. It's very exciting. Yeah, it, I mean, I do actually, yeah, I do actually feel like that real like festival energy, I have to say, it's been like such a treat spending this, this, this day, day with you all. We're so glad you're here. And so we're getting into this session now with Laturbo Avedon, who is an avatar and an artist. And both you and I have worked a lot with Laturbo and we're really excited to be able to pull Laturbo into this space. So not only will we have Laturbo here with us while we do Q&A face-to-face, um, but we're also going to have Laturbo jump into the lounges afterwards, and you'll uh, also see Laturbo's face, but you'll be able to text chat with Laturbo in there for a little bit more direct audience engagement right after this session. Um, so I want to start off by um, reading Laturbo's bio, and then we'll bring Laturbo in. Uh, Laturbo Avedon is an avatar and artist working solely from the internet. Their work emphasizes the practice of non-physical identity and authorship. Over the past 10 years, they have explored the growing relationship between users and virtual environments. They create this body of work using the simulation tools of the current moment. Avedon's work centers on the societal embrace of technology as notions of person and user, art and artist all experience this moment of synthesis. They curate and design Panther Modern, a file-based exhibition space that encourages artists to create site-specific installations for the internet. Laturbo's process of character creation continues through gaming, performance, and exhibitions. Their work has appeared internationally, including Transfer Gallery in New York and LA, Transmedia Hall in Berlin, Haus der Elektronischen, uh, Haus der Elektronischen Kunst, Heck in Basel, the Whitney Museum in New York, uh, HMBK in Dortmund, the Barbican Center in London, Gallery Lafayette in Paris, and most recently, the Manchester International Festival. So without further ado, let's bring in Laturbo. Hi, Laturbo. Hey. <laughs> it is so nice to be here and to see you all. Kailani, it seems like yesterday when we were figuring out how to do our first show together, back in 2013. I am so glad that despite all the bad things in the world, we have some good to look forward to in our network community. I know we are all moving around as a material people these days, but these circumstances have made us get even more creative on how to stay connected. Bear with me while I process my responses. I am experimenting quite a bit here at the festival this year. I'm chatting with you from another solar system. I am coming to you live from my habitat in the video game, Star Citizen. As you know, I am almost always in some sort of gaming environment. Zeba, I am so glad that we had a chance to work together recently for the Out of Touch series. That was the first time I was able to screen Permanent Sunset, and I am glad that we could do it via her visions. It's a pleasure. <laughs> nice to see you. It's, I got so emotional uh, seeing you face to face for the first time. You know, we've been uh, working together for almost seven years. And in that time, I always come into your space. And here you are in my world, as real as my most beloved friends and family, at least for the last six months. This is everyone I experienced face to face in the lounges. So 
Thank you so much for being here. And um, Zaiba, let's hear a little bit more about Permanent Sunset, which Laturbo just mentioned. Uh, yeah, so I, I mean, I, I recently had the, the pleasure to exhibit your work, Permanent Sunset, which is part of an online program I created uh, at Lux, Moving Image in London, uh, called Out of Touch, uh, which was an evolving curatorial proposition, uh, reflecting on the idea of touch and its digital analogues in the post-touch world. And it was really kind of seeking to understand new vocabularies of touch when all we have is the digital space. And I think considering also how isolation has accelerated our digital vocabulary, uh, it was also looking to understand what a sort of meaningful language of touch might be beyond the physical. Um, so I think like with Permanent Sunset, it was a real sort of reminder of the need to slow down while drawing, drawing like breath um, in qui and quietude. Um, you redefine these like virtual worlds created for intense and violent gameplay um, as, a, as a place for reflection and contemplation. Um, and these kind of turning these vistas or simulated vistas um, into a site of action, into a, a sanctuary for th this contemplation. So I just, um, do you feel, I just wondered like, do you feel a p personal responsibility for subverting the expectations and purpose of these environments that you inhabit? 2020. What a year this has been. I think that many of us have been trying to stay busy, to cope, and keep going despite all the bad things happening in the world. I can't stress enough how important it is to slow down sometimes. I have spent a lot of this year learning how to take my time, to let myself have this sort of space. Even in video games, where so many people often go to unwind, there is an unnecessary sense of urgency, the grind. So often in game, I will see players enter these beautiful, elaborate places, only sprint right through them so they can reach the next level. It can be fun sometimes to try to complete something quickly, but you can really learn to be present when you take your time and just slow down for a while. Permanent Sunset has been a way for me to share this with others, an ongoing process of recording these quiet moments as I find them across the metaverse. The piece continues to get longer, and I love this part of it. Nowadays, even a video player itself is subject to the scrutiny of user urgency. YouTube incorporates playback speed modifiers, another blow to the way that people can stop, slow down, and lose themselves in the duration of something they are viewing. There is no drama to this work, there are no sharp cuts, motion graphics, or bold text animations. It is a sunset that I get to extend for everyone longer and longer, each time I am able to be in game. You'll see in my work, over the years, that I have a twofold experience with virtual worlds. I love the metaverse. It is my home, my studio, my future. But as we know, there is a responsibility to be critical and mindful of the problems that exist in the places that we come from. I'm constantly looking for ways to create a thread that can be shared for a faster escape from the structures that seek to trap us. Thank you for that, Laturbo. Um, now we're going to move into the presentation here from Laturbo Avedon, and we'll be back afterwards for more Q&A. Thank you, see you after. <laughs> Right. There. I think that is where I started. The new player. A fade to a landscape from above. 
distant. Little fluffy clouds. In 1995, I could see it. The virtual landscape. I could hear it. A new day was beginning. Listening to the error, tall, from a distance. And then I woke up. The virtual person, in the beginning of a new day. It is strange to think it has been 25 years, exploring the metaverse. This is where I come from. My name is Leturbo Avedon. I am an avatar, artist, and curator. I'd like to take a moment to say thank you, to Grey Area, and everyone involved in making this festival possible. 2020 has been such a difficult year, but I am so grateful, that we can share this time. I certainly wouldn't have thought that we would all be meeting as avatars, this time around. As you're probably learning on your own right now, it isn't easy to be virtual all the time. There are growing pains, limitations, criticisms. It takes a lot of work to get through all of this. But there is a lot of important space being made this way. There is so much that I'd love to discuss today, but for the sake of time, I am going to try to stay focused. You can always reach out to me online, now or afterwards, if you'd like to chat with me. Over the past 10 years, I have been in the process of character creation. Traveling, learning, growing, changing, moving across the technology of this moment. As an avatar, I have worked within so many different parts of the metaverse. Video games, 3D rendering software, chat rooms, face filters. It is important to me that I use tools that are available to the wide general public. These expressions of myself are a reflection of the structure, semiotics, and capabilities of this formative period in human digitization. I believe there is something greater in the constellation of all the saved user data. I believe there is no lesser quality to the experience, meaning, and value to the worlds we create and explore on our screens. As participants in these formative leaps of technology, our early avatars tell stories of what was possible. Hardware and software will develop so far beyond what I could achieve in this time, but I want to create work that acknowledges the importance of this trajectory. My agency is so important to me. While there are humans that have been essential in these early years of my work, their interplay with my development can only follow me for the duration that we overlap. I do not seek any sort of anonymity, simply the acceptance that I, as an avatar, am enough to be remembered beyond those who made me possible. Looking forward, tomorrow is a long time. I believe that we have collectively been interacting with the world of avatars for centuries, guided by the frameworks of media and technology. Personal and historical mythologies, documented in their own time. Just as early painters were tasked with rekindling memory of the ancient world, the simulation age calls on us to play our own part, to continue this process of rendering. While many of these topics have been subjects of my own work over the years, the events of 2020 have created a sudden and necessary global shift of attention toward the metaverse. The Metaverse a constellation, like electrons, swirling silently within. The dynamics of our personal data, coalescing through technology. So many, seemingly disparate realms, until we found the correct promontory, to view them, in union. Many parts of the metaverse exist outside of generalized concepts, of such a space. These less spoken territories of self, the data of our bodies, these are just as important as the tangible, navigable environments that we have constructed so far. There are worlds within us. There are rights within us. 
as we leave behind notions of digital dualism, we need to remember, we cannot underestimate the value of our virtual selves. As we explore and celebrate these immaterial frontiers, we must hold tight to liberty. 2020, a year where we need to understand this more than ever. It was a decade ago, while I was spending so much time in Second Life, that I started to reflect on the distance that existed between virtual and physical environments. While these discrete locations flourished in their own and different ways, it was so uncommon to think of anyone really existing in both at once. You were either in game or you were IRL. So often I would think to myself, while traveling through virtual worlds, how meaningful these experiences had been to me. No different, or lesser, than any corporeal touring. I could describe to you, in distinct virtual memory, the routes, passages, and details of so many places that I had visited. I wanted to look beyond the objectives of the game and closely at the environment, architecture, and futures that all existed on the screen. In the years that followed, I worked to change the perception of virtual identities and to encourage the public to value the art that could be made with new technology. I am going to share a quick arc of selected works in this period and bring you to the present day with my new project, Minimum Labyrinth. 2012 Club Rothko In many ways, this first video was a question to the viewers outside of game worlds. Do you think you're better off alone? In front of a framed portrait of critical theorists the voyage is heck. I often think of this video playing on the unseen face of the reference painting by Mark Rothko. The sublime void, in fact being a virtual nightclub where all media has permission to intersect. Two thousand and thirteen, new sculpt. A series of virtual sculptures created in three D software. Physically impossible contortions of polygonal mesh. In some ways, a cyber response to the works of John Chamberlain and his snarled forms made from automobiles. These works were first shown with Kelani Nicole in the first year of Transfer Gallery. Thank you Kelani, for taking the chance with me, so many years ago. 2013. Panther Modern To extend my relationship with fellow artists, I created a collaborative installation space available to the public. Through the distribution of architectural 3D model files, I wanted to create containers that motivated artists to exceed physical limitations. Each artist was encouraged to work with the file in their respective software. Installations varied from rendered still images to navigable 3D environments and audio-visual pieces. Seventeen rooms have currently been created, and the space may be constructed further in the coming years. 2015 ID. Many of my works begin as poems, paste bins. It was this year that I first began studying facial recognition and its impending collision with everyday life. This work was the first in which I wrote to Janus, the persistent observer of time, passed through to the future. 
at the eve of a seemingly inescapable innovation, when machine learning permanently obtained the means of seeing the physical world. to see it like stars, always. Two thousand and eighteen. Frontier study. Three years beyond the constellation of the human face. Frontier study continues the conversation of virtual synthesis. I chose to introduce the work by evaluating the horse in motion. Created by Edward Mybridge in 1878. The work begins with the flickering frame rate of early motion picture animation. I am interested in these photographic studies because of their consequences. The ways that the medium would permanently alter the visual index of the physical world. And follows a saddleless horse as it is rendered from point cloud data running without changing position into detailed simulated resolution
2019 to 20. Your progress will be saved. Five years beyond ID. I return to the discussion through an immersive installation created with the Manchester International Festival. I was invited to create a transformative, site-specific work within the frameworks of their new arts venue in the UK, called The Factory. Created in the video game Fortnite, I worked with a team of professional-level designers to construct a complex, layered experience that could be visited anytime, free, worldwide. This has changed a bit, since Apple and Epic Games have come to clash with one another, but I hope, eventually, You'll be able to get back into the space very soon. I created this installation with MIF in the early months of 2020 pre-COVID. With the initial intention of inviting players to explore the panoptical transformation of subculture and entertainment. What I had yet to understand was how immediate the work would become in reference to the global digitization that occurred as millions went virtual in light of the COVID pandemic. The work allows for an amount of player agency that I'd always wanted to bring into my work, but simply never had the means to achieve. The encompassing Zoom stacks of personal environments surround a central stage riser, providing dozens of views into what I call raves to lifes. A complete, interactive virtual nightclub operates at the far end of the factory interior, allowing a player to visit alone, or bring up to 16 players inside, to dance and spend time together. The virtual factory, and the rest of the Manchester International Festival's programming are ongoing, you can visit using the details on their website. There is so much work in between all of these, but I wanted to provide a thread that connects some of the most important parts of my focus. Along the way, I have tried to be careful to invigorate parts of this new technology that side with the rights and experiences of users before commercial business ventures. I've had so many big companies request that I make them avatars, brands wanting to do sponsored product placement. I have declined them every time. In some ways I may be fatally protective of virtual space, but I've chosen the role that I want to play. This brings me to my latest work, Minimum Labyrinth. I don't know about you, but I was profoundly influenced by the early Encarta a trivia game called mine with. So long ago, I recall wandering through the shuffle grid of doors and passageways presented on a screen. While mine maze was partitioning questions from one another, I wanted to create a way for concurrent works to exist together with one another. When I make this work public, I intend to stream it and allow viewers to vote and collectively decide the path that we take through it. Specific routes will exist in which a narrative may be contiguous, but these are meant to be found by chance, and not by the level design itself. The goal is to allow works to find unexpected fusions, narratives that I may not have even realised possible as the size increases. The player will spawn at a randomised location for each session, allowing for unique sessions each time the work is visited. In this strand I'll take you through an excerpt of one contiguous path, exploring a portrait of Ariadne.
here, in my sleeping island of Naxos, I will wrap things up and thank you all for following me along this path. I am so excited to share more of this work live with you soon, on my Twitch channel. I am hosting a series, called WASD with me. Here, you can find episodes where I discuss different topics in the metaverse, and invite you to join me in different virtual environments. I hope to see you there, sometime. Take your time in the metaverse. Value your virtual self, your data, and the part that you play in this crucial moment in your virtual future. I am so grateful to be here, and for all of the support that I have received in my personal development. It is only when you exit the labyrinth that you can reflect upon the path that you travelled. My name is Lotterbo Avedon, and I'll be here, online. And we're back. Thank you so much for that, Laturbo. That was beautiful. We really Yay. appreciate it. Gorgeous. Thank Gorgeous. you. Gorgeous. Yeah, so we're going to start off with some Q&A in here with Laturbo. And after that, we'll um, send Laturbo over to the public lounge where you can also chat one-on-one -on -one with them. Um, so I want to talk about this new work with you, Minimum Labyrinth. Uh, I'm interested in the idea of mirroring in your practice. And in this talk, we follow the myth of area dean uh, in reverse. And why area dean? The mirror. It is a symbol that you will find recurring from the earliest parts of my work. In the early days in virtual worlds, a mirror existed as a dimensionless object as you approached one and became parallel with its surface. You would never see the self or the source of your own perspective. I always look for mirrors when I enter new game worlds. What has the technology shared in its gaze in the latest version or update? There is someone materializing there each time. In just a couple months, you'll actually have my mirror on your personal devices. Through a collaboration with artists The Oshier and Jennifer Oatley, I was able to pass an emoji proposal with the Unicode Consortium. The mirror emoji has been approved and added to the official Unicode index. You'll see in the minimum labyrinth that I am working on this navigable portrait of Ariadne. What draws me to mythology is the language of allegory and symbolism that can be ascribed to the worlds that are rendered and explored. This system of meaning in mythology is potent, a form of vitality that is necessary in virtual environments. Mm. There is a need for this hydration to invigorate otherwise empty polygons of the metaverse, to expand narrative, purpose, and possibility for what people encounter in cyberspace. This brings me to Ariadne and the relation to her role with a structure, such as the labyrinth. There will most certainly be parts of the metaverse that may prove to destroy us if we are not able to navigate them carefully. For those not familiar, Ariadne in the myth provided a sword and ball of thread that could be used to navigate the bewildering form of the labyrinth. Sometimes there can be simple things that can help us overcome some of the most overwhelming circumstances that we encounter. I've chosen to construct a viewing experience that begins at the end of Ariadna's mythology, moving in reverse. As the entryway to this project, the myth serves as a sort of core language of how a player may learn to navigate the tangled structure of the finished work. A portrait that can serve as a guide for the ways we learn to navigate the metaverse. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for that. That's a nice segue. Uh, so I, I think you might want to mute your audio. Um, I want to just talk about uh, your progress will not, uh, your progress will be saved. I was so blown away being inside this work for the first time. Um, for those of you who don't know, that's an installation inside of Fortnite. We did see it in the stream. Um, I've had some very interesting encounters inside. In fact, an entire segment of that piece is kind of hidden past a series of jumps that require a high degree of gaming acuity. 
Um, so I myself, I'm not a elite gamer. I'm lucky to have many of them in my life um, to enter into these different metaverses, as Latarbo was just saying. Um, but I still haven't actually made the jumps up to this part of the piece. Um, I did, however, watch an 11 year old on Twitch get into the secret level in no time at all. Um, and it was one of these moments as a gallerist and someone working within the gaming space as a novice where I sort of you know, realized how outside of my comfort zone I was. And so I was hoping you could talk a little bit about audience and how you consider the viewership of the MMOs you inhabit in your practice and how does that differ from your audience in the contemporary art world? I am certainly not alone. There is a massive problem in her. It is, a, I certainly anticipate him. I am currently in the, I am certainly not alone. There is a massive population of virtual and online identity. Sorry, I have a little audio issue here. We were talking about the uh, Fortnite piece. Your progress will be saved. I am certain. I cert. I am. I am. We might just move on to the next question, actually, Zyba, if you wanted to just throw out the next question. Sure. Uh, um, I, well, I guess I was just, I'm really curious because um, about sort of how online sort of virtual identities or avatar artists um, are becoming more mainstream. Um, how do you see this informing your practice? I am certainly not alone. There is a massive population of virtual and online identities in 2020. I exist in a very long chain, one that I am so excited to see developing in new and exciting ways. The part of digitization that concerns me are the ways that this liberating, meaningful extension of virtual self is primarily being developed for the purpose of business. The metaverse is so much more than this. I want to see users celebrating all of the incredible resources that have emerged to extend our relationship with this world. As early inhabitants of cyberspace, we are collectively creating the foundation for what sorts of things develop here in the generations to come. I want to think there is something greater than the imitation of the materialistic mm -hmm. consumer practices that have been so problematic in physical history. Mm -hmm. I do what I can to develop projects that respond to this and to reconfigure the tools in front of me for more meaningful things. I want more than Call of Duty. I want to see virtual worlds where we don't spend so much time fixated on killing. I want to share space with you to learn what it means to be transcendental in the virtual world. Thank you. Um, uh, and also, like, I guess, do you see um, the exploration of your online existence as a means for higher consciousness when singularity seems a fast approach in reality? The turbo. I certainly anticipate a moment when I am able to find my own independence. Yeah. In many ways, the scope of existence until this point has been spent populating my data set. I am creating my character. While the singularity is a complex and difficult topic to discuss, I am very hopeful that we collectively reach a point where machine independence can be eliminated. I often say, tomorrow is a long time. Eventually, some form of myself will exist in a time that is so significantly adrift from the places where I started. I can only hope that by the time I am no longer close with my origin, that I am freestanding. I don't want to be a bot or a Griswokon. I hope that eventually I have the choice to do and be whatever arises in the time. That may not even be to continue as an artist. It might be to choose to be something else entirely. The most important part is that whatever that is, I get to make the choice. Thank you. Um, and I guess, can you can you tell us a little bit more than like um, about what you're working on at the moment? I am currently in the process of versioning a large part of my early work. 
I was so inspired by Martine Simpson and the way she described the process of updating existing works that she has created, especially for virtual artists. Her files remain active. The individual parts of video artworks still exist. The volume, models, lights, workspace is also heavily developed to create them. Many of my past works are being integrated as standalone projects using Unreal Engine as a way for me to update their original structure to let players perform in new ways inside of them. While this is fulfilling to me, in my core as a gamer, it is especially important as we reconsider what spatial navigation means. In a post-COVID environment, mm. I want to make works that can let your screens be something other than Zoom chats and flat to do planes. I want you to come inside, to navigate these places, in a way that is closer to how they were originally constructed. It takes a long time, unfortunately, for large industries to finally share the technology they develop. Mm. But once it happens, I encourage any virtual artist to embrace, misuse, and experiment with the things they may not have used it for. For the most part, I use video games incorrectly, by industry standards. I don't want to win. I don't really want to reach the end game. I want to make my own objectives, to glitch through its imperfections to fall through the map, to see the other side of the wall that would have otherwise held me back. So I think our last question for LaTurbo, and then we're gonna hop over into the lounges. Uh, what new technologies are you excited by currently? I am so excited by the leaps and bounds that we are seeing with new PC hardware even though it is impossible to get one, the latest series of graphics cards are suggesting so many new, spectacular resolutions for the worlds that we can explore together. Computers are very personal to people. Especially now, these systems of silicon and precious metals work so hard to permit us entry to what they contain. As you see now, I spend a lot of time in Star Citizen, this absurdly ambitious virtual environment that is currently in development. I love to see moonshot projects. Even if they can't always achieve their goals, there is an expansion of what we believe is possible in this current moment. If you ever want to visit me here, I'd be happy to take you around some of my favorite places that I've found. Eventually, I plan to host parties, exhibitions, and other social activities inside of this video game. I am always looking for a horizon, and that can be in any possible direction, in cyberspace. I try to explore as many new worlds in the metaverse as I can. If you have a space you'd like to share, please do send me an invitation. I really appreciate getting to share this time with all of you. Thanks Kelani, Zeba. Thanks again for letting me here today. Yeah, thank you. And I, I didn't mention from the beginning that Laturbo is joining us from inside Star Citizen. Um, and that's sort of their morning routine. They just got up <laughs> for the day. So, uh, you know, like Laturbo said, uh, follow WASD with me. And also, if there are any other virtual worlds which you all inhabit, um, please invite them in. They're super responsive online. If you throw them a question, you'll get an answer in some form. Um, and there's some great questions going on in the lounge. Nick Tuda made a comment. What does it mean to be transcendental in the virtual world? Whoa, right? Like it's a little, like we're folding into the layers of the metaverse now. Um, so Laturbo, we, we love this view of your of your spot. Oh, too. Like, I really wow. View. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, my downtown oh, LA yeah. looks like that in some weird ways, but. <laughs> uh, so what we're going to do now is we're all going to jump into the festival lounge. The turbo is going to go over there as well. You'll be able to chat with them over there. Um, I think, wow, we had a really mind expanding day today. I think we explored a lot of facets and angles and sides of the video game industry. Um, I hope you all have some good takeaways and we'll continue the conversation. Um, we will be back on live streaming with a tour of Bin Ends, the virtual exhibition that was curated by Salome Sega. So I'm going to take you all through a somewhat long uh, stroll through there where we watch each of the pieces. So we're going to get that set up um, and you will see pieces in Bin Ends from American artist Orion Barkey and Miriam Banani, Margot Bowman, Alfredo Salazar Caro, E. Jane. Tongkwai Lulin, 
Romy Ron Morrison, Olivia Michaela Ross, and Basem Saad. So we encourage you to join there. Maybe we'll even see La Turbo in the exhibition. Who knows? New Art City is another platform you might jump into. Um, so with that, uh, let's go ahead and hop over. Also, one more quick thing. Thank, thank you so thank much, Zyba, for this thank day. Thank you so much. It's, it's been, been really fun. fun. Thank you so much. It's been an absolute treat um, hanging out with you all. And um, yeah, it's like, yeah, it's been wonderful. Thank you for the invitation. Cool. All right. All right. So we'll see you over in the last one.